Hey everyone, it is Lisa and Bernina Barr from Primitive Gatherings, and today we want to talk about sustainable sewing. So there's a few things that we could make at home instead of buying them and throwing them in the trash. So I was super excited to see American Patchwork Quilting did a whole article on this. They have in this issue from All People Quilt number 175, I believe it is the April 2022 issue, they have five different things that you can make at home to get rid of some of the things that we buy every day. So make sure you go and find this issue if you don't already have it in your collection. Some of the things that we can replace are, I use these makeup removers, sometimes two and three a day. Now we can replace these by making them with flannel on one side and fireside or minky on the other side. So we have a whole stack of them there. And then we also can replace our paper towels by making paper towel out of flannel as well. And then you would just wash all of these items instead of throwing them out and buying new. You would instead wash them with your towels and your other things. So we'll get more in depth on some of these things, but first we wanna talk about how to make them. And we are gonna feature our Bernina serger. Now what Barb, tell us a little bit about this machine. All right, this is the L890, top of the line. I've had this machine at home now for, oh, like six months. And I love it. And there's a whole variety of things that you can do with it. I have some samples that we can show you later. But uh, when Lisa came to me and asked me if I could serge the edges of some flannels, it was like, can do, no problem. And I uh, set it up for a four thread overlock with integrated safety and whipped around all of these. I took a layer cake and I used most of the layer cake to make the paper towel replacement. And then I took some of them and I made the little container for our makeup removers and the makeup removers. And uh, I also did a couple different things. And we made one that was two-sided. And yeah, I did... Some of these are only one-sided. Yeah, most of them are one-sided. Yeah. This one I made two-sided. Just to see what it looked like and how it would work. And I made the rolled hem on the serger. And I did a chain stitch on the serger that would keep it together, keep the layers together, like a mini quilting. Okay, so um, the machine itself is capable of doing all of the various overlock stitches, two thread, three thread, four thread. Uh, it's able to do the cover stitch, which a lot of people don't know what that is, but if you look at the hem of any of your stretchy materials, there's a cover stitch on those hems. This machine can do that. And it can do a combination of stitches. So if you're wanting to do like the four thread safety stitch, you can also do a chain stitch next to it all in one step. Wow. Yeah. The only thing I know about this machine is that it air threads. Yes, okay. it does. That's the only thing I know about the threads. So to me, that would be amazing. And we are going to show you how that threads too, right? The, right. One of the one of right. the little things we'll show yeah. in a minute in a on bit. how it threads and then how it sews. Yep. So what you need to make the makeup removers is either charm squares or layer cakes. You can cut the layer cakes in four and then you need the minky or the moda fire side, which I have right here. So this is what that looks like. And you can get that at your local quilt shops as well. Now this flannel 
is one of my newest flannel lines that is gonna be coming out in August. So if you wanna go on our website and pre-order some of this to make these beautiful color blue and cream fabrics, those will be available coming in August. So you could use the charm packs or the layer cakes for those as well. Then for the paper towel, this is obviously a layer cake and you can, with the layer cakes, there's 42 fabrics in there, so you can make some for yourself or you could just keep rolling them on there and making a big, big, big roll. So that's super fun. Or you could also buy a fat quarter tower and make both out of fat quarter towers because you can use those. And I don't know about you, but in the pattern for uh, American Patchwork and Quilting, when they talk about, they made rounds. Well, I like a little bit more coverage and, and you know, I, I must, you know, really get a lot, to, but this is a little wimpy for me. So that's why I wanted to use the charm squares for that and make those a little bit bigger. So if you want the recipe for the um, makeup remover rounds, you would go to American Patchwork and Quilting type in um, makeup remover rounds and it'll pop up. So what you need for that is distilled water. So I, <laughs> I have a jug right here and I grabbed it in the wrong spot. And then you're gonna need some coconut oil, some witch hazel, Soothing. and then some essential oils. And I like orange, orange or lemon. I like citrusy. citrusy smelling things. And then a mason jar to put it in and then you shake it up. And then when you're ready, you just dip some of that on there and off comes the makeup. Uh, that's the best part of the day for me is to take off that makeup. So if you would love to get yourself some flannel, you know that I make this beautiful flannel for Mo from Moda. This one that's coming up next is Lakeside Gatherings. However, we do have some farmhouse gatherings and some autumn gatherings if you can find it out there in the wild yet. So any kind of flannel works for that. You want the flannel to have a little bit more resistance instead of, and it'll soak it in, it's a little thicker. So that's why we are using flannel. And as one more thing I wanna talk about because we're gonna replace buying these things and throwing them in the landfill and then the paper towel, you know, from throwing these in the, the cardboard and the paper towel in the garbage. One other thing, as I was getting ready to do this video, we can replace this as well because we have this cute little thread picker that picks off all of our threads. And if you're a quilter, you got them. We, we all have them. Right yep. before you go out the door or before you do your video, we have these on our website as well. You could probably make these too. It's just a little, um, I don't know what that Spongy. stuff is called, but yeah, that yeah. picky fabric there. Anything that'll grab the threads. But those are three things that we can stop buying from mm -hmm. the, the store in bulk and make reuse. them and make reuse. them pretty and yeah. cute and right reuse, yes. yes and this would be you know nice in our kitchen as well you do have to reclaim the cardboard there but that's okay that's reuse okay. it recycle reuse. it all right all right so next up barb is going to show us how to use this serger and how fast and simple it is to serge around these projects so you want to see how this is threaded and how easy it is all right so i'm going to change I want to change one of these colors. I have four threads up here and I want to change one of the colors because I want that in my looper rather than in my uh, outer stitching. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to raise my needles up. I'm going to raise my presser foot up. I'm going to take off my junk catcher and I'm going to open the machine up. Everything is really easily accessible. If you're lost, there's diagrams in here. Your machine will tell you exactly how to thread it. It has videos in the machine that show you how to thread it. So this is super easy and almost foolproof. But somebody wanted to see how those air threaders did it. So I'm gonna cut one of the air threaders. All right, I'm gonna take that color off. I'm gonna put this color on. And, you know, I have maxi lock thread on here right now. And that's a good basic 
serger thread. You can put any normal 40 weight, 50 weight, 60 weight on here, and it'll work just fine. But the big cones go a lot further. Of course, the looper takes more than the uh, needle threader does. So sometimes you may want to put a neutral on the loopers because it uses more and put your color that matches your fabric on the needles. So there's a whole variety of ways of doing what you wanna do. But right now, I just wanna show you how easy it is to use the air threader. All right, so I took this one off. Right, there, okay. So in order to get this one through the machine and get the new one started, I'm just gonna take this until I get all my threads out of there. And now I can start to thread this. It is easy peasy. Here it is. Just like that. Just like that. So is there any reason why you have different color threads or all the same color threads? Um, like I said, the loopers take more threads. So sometimes you want to put the basic colors like a gray or a white or a cream or black over here. And then reserve uh, colors that match your fabrics for the needles, because that's like if you open a seam, you'll see these rather than these. Okay. So yeah, I, uh, I tend to try and match what's going through my needles to my, to my fabric. All right. Okay. All right. And that's it. Done all right. Now wait one minute. All right. I'm going to leave that in that position. And I'll tell you, this machine is so smart. I can't close it until I put that switch in the right position. If I had another, there's another switch in there. If I don't have that one in the right position, I'll get a message on my screen. It is so easy. It's wonderful. It's a great machine. So now I'm ready to, to go again. So I'll just do one side of this so we can see that it actually does work. Don't you love that? <laughs> it's like I can be a speed demon. What we're going to do now is we're going to take a couple of layer cake pieces and I can show you how easy it is to go around these with our really beautiful L890 serger. It's all set up. And away we go. And all right, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to square the corners. I'm not going to round the corners. It's a lot easier just to go straight. It's a lot quicker just to go straight. So that's what I'm going to do here. If you, Are you using a certain stitch bar? I am using what I talked about first is that four thread overlock with integrated safety seam. Okay. It tells me right on my screen. Uh, Bailey <laughs> will write that down. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But um, I have my knife on so it's cutting, you know, that zigzag edge off. And I'll show you what I mean by, by that rounded corner. I'll do the next one, rounded. And you'll see it takes a little bit more, more thought and time, okay? Because you can just whip along if you're just going straight. But curving is a little different. I don't have my... Okay. 
I don't have my knee lift I, on I right now. I like the straight ones. Yeah. Yeah. Would it help if you took a scissors and rounded them off? That may be a good idea. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You see, I mean, it's a nice rounded corner, but it did take longer. And if you want to just whip through these, going edge to edge is a lot easier. And then for something like this, I just cut this off. If it was a blouse, I, I have a blouse to show you. I would be taking these and tucking them in, or I would be taking them and knotting them so that they didn't come apart. But for something like this, it's kind of down and dirty. You do what you need to do. And this will go through the wash really nicely. I've done a couple of these in the wash and it holds up pretty well. So it's not, you know, you don't have to be afraid that it's going to unravel, all right? I wanted to show one thing. One of the things that I noticed when I was making my cute little bag was I had an issue with my threading and I didn't have the thread tied down into the uh, tension plates. And so it was riding up here. And what I got was a very ugly, ugly stitch right along here. So I didn't see that till I was done with that particular run. And it was like, ah, crap. And then I thought, no, I'm just gonna leave it because then I can show you that you have to make sure all of your threads are in the tension plates, all right? You do have the ability to change the tension on all of these threads, so if your stitch is a little loose or a little tight, you have the ability to change tension. I have made several items and I have never had to vary from what the machine is set at default. So let me show you a couple of things that I've been working on. All right. Okay, Luke is always talking about boy stuff. So <laughs> I made this, which is actually for travel. It's got plastic pockets. You can put stuff in. This one's got an accordion pocket. I made a mesh pocket here. Um, it's a commercial pattern. It was easy to do. The only thing that I did on my straight machine was the binding. And that was only because I was in a hurry. So everything else was on the serger? Everything else was done on wow. the serger. So um, I put the zippers in with the serger. I did all the quilting with the serger. So it was. So it's not just that fancy mm, overlock nope, thing. No, nope, no. Nope. What I did on this side, the quilting is actually done with a chain stitch. And that's programmed in here, easy to do. Very cool. So we got some boy stuff. <laughs> Then one of the first things I did was a blouse. And like I said, this has that cover stitch around the hemming. So it's a nice stretchy fabric, stretchy fabric. And it laid flat, was not a problem, was is easy to do. Is the thread the maxi lock or is it a stretchy thread? This, all I have right now is in my collection is maxi lock. Okay. So there is a maxi lock stretch. Okay. I did get some of it, but I haven't used it yet. All right. So, so normal thread worked. Normal works. thread worked. Okay. Yep. This is beautiful. Yep. It's nice and soft, too. And then I made a pair of leggings. The main stitching is that four thread overlock with safety seam. So easy, stretchy. Default settings, all right? Clothing, bags. Now somebody said, what about quilts? So I have a quilt that I started out of Dupiani silk. And as everybody knows who has ever worked with this stuff, 
that it it's thread it shreds I mean the more you handle it the worse it gets so I thought well that's the perfect thing to try my serger on and I have a default stitch on here that's a quarter inch seam so I started a block and it looks exactly to scale with the block that I did on my straight stitch machine. So I'm going to finish this block on my serger and then I'm going to go on probably to finish the quilt on my serger. Yeah, that's amazing. So that I don't have all so that. So this one is just traditionally pieced mm -hmm. and then that one has the, the surging. The yep. surging. That's amazing that it yep. can do so much. Mm -hmm. I was very unaware of that. <laughs> So yeah, yeah, it will, it's a very versatile machine. I can't speak for things that are on the lower side of the product line, but I am really glad I got this one. Really glad. It's very versatile. Thanks for joining us today. Bernina Barb, you did a fantastic job. I can't Thank wait you. to see what else you come up with <laughs> us. And if you are interested at all in the Bernina sewing machines, come visit the guys in Bernina land and Barb would love to show you how to, one of these works and we would love to sell you one. So come on in and see what we all have to offer. And then remember, if you wanna pre-order some of those pre-cuts for lakeside gatherings, those are on sale as well and they will deliver in August. All right. Thanks, everyone, and we'll see you again.